Hi, I am Asuka Gori. This video is an extension to my other YouTube video, User Account and Password Aging Files in Linux, in which I had presented an analysis of the PassWD and Shadow files in detail and discussed their roles along with sharing several commands that reference the two files for information and validation or update them as necessary. In this video, I will analyze the group and gshadow files that maintain Linux group and group password and group administrator information. Together, the four files, passwd, shadow, group, and gshadow, store information for all defined users and groups on the system. And they are consulted or updated by hundreds of commands and programs. The concept, use, and formats of the group and gshadow files is universal and applies to all popular Linux distributions and versions, as well as their clones with minor or no differences. Here is what I'm going to cover in this video. Number one. The role of group account and group password files. Number two, an analysis of the group file. Number three, an analysis of the gshadow file. And number four, common commands that consult or write to these files. Every user in Linux is assigned a group at the time of user creation. And this group is referred to as the user's primary group. By default, the name of this primary group matches the name of the user account that it is associated with. Linux allows several users to belong to a single group and it also allows a single user to be a member of several groups at a time. All users that share group membership get identical rights on the files and folders that the group owns. Linux stores basic account information for all local groups in a text file called group and it stores group passwords and group administrator information in another text file called gshadow. Both files are located in the etc directory. Linux decides what rights to give to a user on files and folders and whether to allow a user to change their group identity based on the information available in these files. The group and gshadow files are updated at the time of user and group account creation, modification, removal, and group password change. An automatic backup of these files is created before any changes are committed to them given their criticality for system operation. Let's take a close look at the group file and analyze a sample entry to understand the mechanics of the file. The group file stores a one line entry per group account with each line containing four pieces of information that are separated by the colon character. This file is owned by the root user and root group with permissions set to world readable and owner writable. The slide shows a sample entry from the group file for a group account called user1 which is associated with a user account called user1. The slide also shows a number in parentheses to identify the fields. I will use this number to explain the field. Field number 1 holds a unique group name, user1 in our example. The default maximum number of characters allowed in a group name is 32, with the exception of special and wildcard characters that are not permitted due to their special meaning to the shell. Field number 2 contains the letter X by default which points the commands and programs looking for a group level password to the gshadow file. If you see a combination of random letters, numbers and special characters instead, it would imply that number one, a group level password is set, number two, the shadow password mechanism is inactive and number three, the gshadow file does not exist. And if this field is empty, non-members will not be prompted for the group password when they try to change their group temporarily using the new grp command. Setting a group level password is a rare scenario. Field number 3 stores a numeric identifier which is known as the group ID or the GID. Group ID 0 is reserved and used for the root group account. GIDs between 1 and 999 are reserved for system and service group accounts. And GIDs starting at 1000 to the default maximum of 60,000 are used for normal group accounts. And field number 4 is the last field that stores a comma separated list of all group members. In our example on the slide here, it shows only one member, which is user1. Let's take a quick look at the default user1 group entry on the system. This entry was added when I originally created the user account user1. Grab user1 slash etc slash group file. And there you go. User1 is a group name there is no password 1000 is the gid for this group account and user 1 is the only member in this group 
and the permissions on the group file are slash etc slash group read and write for the owner and read only for everybody else on the system the ownership belongs to the root user and the owning group is the root group the second file that is used during group authentication is the gshadow file which is also located in the etc directory this file stores encrypted group level passwords which provides an added layer of protection at the group level Let's take a close look at the gshadow file and analyze a sample entry to understand its mechanics. The gshadow file maintains a one line entry per group account for each corresponding group account that is defined in the group file. Each line in this file is comprised of four colon separated fields. The permissions on this file are restricted to root readable only. The slide shows a sample entry from the gshadow file for group user 1. And it also shows a number in parentheses to identify each field. I will use the numbers to explain the fields. Field number 1 holds a group name as it appears in the group file. Field number 1 in both group and gshadow files is store identical information. Field number 2 may contain an encrypted password. An empty field or a single exclamation point in this field would imply that the group account is only available to its members. A single exclamation point prepended to the encrypted password would imply that the group account is temporarily locked for non-members. Group level passwords are rarely used due to security concerns. Field number 3 lists names of group administrators with authorization to add or remove members to and from the group. And field number 4 is the last field that contains a comma separated list of group members. Field number 4 in both group and gshadow files is store identical information. And here is the default entry for user1 group in the gshadow file on my system. Grab user1 group slash etc slash gshadow file. I need to be the root user in order to be able to view the contents of this file. So sudo grab user1 slash etc slash gshadow and my password is here you go user1 is the group name user1 is the member of this group and there is a exclamation point in the password field field 3 is empty there are a number of linux commands that consult these files for information or write to these files these commands include the group add command to add a new group, the group mod command to modify the attributes of an existing group, the group del command to remove a group, the user add command to add a user private group, the user mod command to add group members to existing groups, the user del command to remove a group as part of the user deletion process, the gpasswd command to set group level password, add group members and administrators, the new grp command for temporary group switching, the chown and chgrp commands to validate the presence of a group before modifying owning group on files and folders, the login program to identify a user's group memberships, the ps, top and ls commands to resolve group names to their corresponding gids, and the list goes on and on. I'll do another video on the usage of some of these commands. Stay tuned. And here is a list of all the free videos on Linux that I have created for you. These videos complement my books on Linux to understand Linux from scratch to an advanced level and at the same time help you get ready for Linux certification exams such as RHCSA, RHCE, CompTIA Linux Plus, LPIC1, LFCS and LFCE. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, provide your comments below and share it with your friends and colleagues. Please subscribe to my channel to be among the first to get notifications of my new videos. Thank you for your time.